Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Now I know someone around there because I can't see that far, so I can hear. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, this morning I'd like to share with you one of the uh, common behavior, common things that we all face. That is fear. We know that our generation is known as the fear, fearful generation. This is because we are fearful of so many things in life. We fear death, the unknown, hunger, war, danger, failure, and all kinds of disasters which we experience almost every day of our life. Nowadays, everything seems to cause us to fear. That is why we all live in fear all the time. Because we hear, hear all kind of news from radio, from TV, or from friends, or from every source of news. And we see, not only see from the news in, on TV program, on the news around the world, but we even witness with our own eyes. We just came back from Surat Thani. I taught there for 10 days. One of the saddest thing that we not only heard about it, but we saw so many people cry and so afraid, so fearful. One of the young missionary from Hong Kong, about 27 years old, and then he came to be a missionary and teach Chinese, English, and he knows about four or five languages. So he is very, very attractive young man, only 27 years old. But he just came out from one church, finished the ministry, and he was going to go to the next church that I was teaching in that church. He was a new driver of motorcycle. So he came out from the church and take a U-turn and one of the semi-truck just kind of hit him and his head, the uh, safety hat protected and crashed, just suddenly dead. And then I did not know, I was teaching the last hour. I heard a lot of cry outside the building so I came out and said, what happened? So they told me. That is uh, so fearful. So people just cry and did not know why this happened. And uh, so that is what our work today. And so many things seems like can cause us a lot of pain, suffering, and most of all, fear. People die, suffer, and this located, and we have witnessed so many people around the world try to relocate lives, and uh, so sad, and uh, so much of suffering experience. So that is our world, and many people being cast into helpless and hopeless situation around our world. So that is what I'm going to uh, share with you this morning. The scripture that our sister just read. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And uh, verse th 13 and 14 said, For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Do not be afraid. So now I'd like to share with you at least three thoughts. The first one, just ask the question, What is fear? What is fear? Fear, 
there could be many, many definitions. Each one of us could have given one definition. But I just give you some, my own personal thought concerning fear. The first one that come to my mind is one of the negative states of mind. Because our, our uh, mind and our psychology, if we are normal, if we are just like a regular situation, we feel peaceful, we feel comfortable, we feel stable. But as soon as the ideas of fear enter into our mind, our mind being disturbed, so we feel like there's some unusual thing happen, and something that disturbs us within. So our mind start to have so many feelings that irregular. So there are so many feelings that I would like to share with you. One is you feel uncertain. Something is not quite sure what is going to happen. The psychologist said that uncertainty is very dangerous psychology because they say that so many people get the uh, mental disorder because when you face your life uncertainties every day and getting stronger and stronger, when you feel uncertain in your life, they say sooner or later you have mental problem. So that is one of the things that we live in an uncertainty situation. So that is part of fear. So when your uncertainty increase degree, the sense of fear start to come and start to get hold of your mind and your life as well. The thing that, the second thing that come to the mind of fear is sense of unknown. We know that unknown is a very, very disturbing uh, feeling. You un the unknown of your future, unknown of what is going to come next, all this unknown future. So a lot of people have that sense of unknown. People have anxiety. People have, don't know what's going to come next. So when you have sense of unknown increasing every day, a lot of young people, when they don't know what their future is going to bring to them. So that's why a lot of young people, a lot of teenagers, when they got to that situation, they feel like, what is their future before them? So that is what a lot of people are afraid of. I remember one time when I was called by the uh, courthouse, the judge, and called me and said that, oh, I got some Cambodians and Laos uh, prisoner, and they break the laws. So they asked me to come and translate for them to be interpreter in the courthouse. I remember that I was, went there several times, but so many times when they, uh, the person that get involved with the laws, they did not know what is the next. So because of the unknown. But I kept telling that you are uh, breaking the law. is not that serious, so don't worry. They're just going to, you know, just you fairly, so you don't worry too much. But because they are in a stage of unknown, so their body just shook, totally shook. I have to hold them tight. I said, don't worry. Your crime is not that serious. So you will not go to jail. You cannot. So, but because unknown, they are just shaken very badly. So that is part of our life. If we are facing this situation of unknown, then we be afraid. We are so fearful. The next one is imagination that bad things might happen. So the psychologist said that a lot of times what we imagine, what's going to happen, 
usually 90% not happen. So, but sometimes because we are so fearful, we are so afraid that unknown, there's something bad going to happen. So that's why we are, we are so afraid ahead of time. I always liked when Jesus saw the disciples, saw the believers, the first sentence God or Jesus always said, fear not. Do not be afraid, you know. That's why a lot of us who live in this fearful world, we always fear of so many things, but God always said, do not be afraid, fear not. Okay, so don't try to imagine what the bad things could happen to you. Try to think of the fact, the truth. 90% what you think will happen will not happen. Maybe 10% will happen, but 90% would not. Okay, so the last one is expect, you know, expectation of bad results. So that's why when you have that stage of fear, you always think the worst thing going to happen, the result. Okay, going to happen. So that is very limited definitions of fear. But you must have a lot of definition for yourself. But this is just share with you. Let's go to the second thoughts. What causes people to fear? Okay. More I study the Word of God, more I study my personal life experience, I realize that the cost of fear from the very, very beginning is the separation from God. When we first created by God and we live close to God and have a personal relationship with God, we did not have that fear. And I remember when I was about three or four years old, my mom kind of took me to the uh, temple festival. So I went and she just hold my hand and then went. So there was a monkey show. So I was so interested and look at and just enjoy so much. Finally, I let go. I let my hand out my mom's uh, hand. So suddenly, I was just a very tiny one. So suddenly I did not know where my mom was. So I looked around all the giants, you know, and where's my mom? I couldn't see my mom's face. So I was panicked and I was crying. I was so afraid. So suddenly I feel like my security gone, okay? My, my connection gone. Everything that I feel like I could be safe, anything, but no longer in that situation. So I just start to cry. There's a sense of now I'm lost. I couldn't find my mom. Could my mom find me? So I tried to think, where's my mom? Have you ever got lost? I lost many times. The worst feeling that I, you got is when you get lost. You, want, you know that you were going to go one particular place, your destination, you know, but you're lost. You don't know where to go, left or right, or, you know, turn left, turn right, you don't know. So that is a very fearful situation. And now I'm getting a little bit smarter. When I was younger, I feel a lot of pride. When I get lost, I don't ask people. <laughs> I just try to find my way out. But now when you get older, be more mature, the Chinese saying that the road is on your mouth. So you just have to ask people. So now I become more humble. So when I get lost, I quickly just ask people where to go. This is the place I want to go tell me. So I think that is what we are talking in this world. We are such a very prideful people. We are not humble people. So we even live in the stage of loss in life. You know, we, we all live as a lost person. You know, but we never want to seek the way out. 
where to go to see God, where to go see, you know, that the one will give us true meaningful of life. That's our God who a creator, who created us, being lost and being uh, no purpose of life. When, when Rick Warren wrote a book that uh, uh, Purpose Driven Life, pur uh, Purpose you know, Driven Life, that book it was so popular. There have been so many, many languages in around the world. Both Christians and non-Christian get help through this book. Why so popular both non and uh, non-Christian and Christian bought the book? So many of my uh, daughter's friends working in the hospital, she said that so many friends of her that were non-Christian, but they read that book, it helped them to feel like life has purpose, particular purpose that God have called each one of us to live in, a, in his purpose. So if we live a life without purpose, life is uncertain, life have no direction, life have no uh, meaning, purpose. So that causes a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear. So this is what one of the causes that causes to have fear in life. And uh, as I mentioned, the first point that negative things might happen. So even negative things cause us to fear and to be afraid. Then the last one that I want to share with you is the, uh, when the, the Bible, the first Corinthians chapter 11, uh, chapter 13, uh, verse 13 said that, Therefore, life based on three things, faith, hope, and love. So if our life live without these three elements in life, we got to have faith that our life in, in, the, in God's hand, we have faith in God, we have faith in Jesus' salvation, we have faith in one another. Okay, and then we should have that very important element of one element of life is hope. If people live without hope, life is very sad. So we got to have hope. We always hope that tomorrow you'll be better than today. We always hope that our life will get better. Our life will be more comfortable. Our life will be more meaningful. Our life will be, will be, will be, to become. So that is hope. And most of all, they say it, the greatest thing is love. And then I remember that Dr. William Glasser, one of the very well-known psychologists of America, he said our basic human needs is two things. One, to be loved. Second, to love. So, if you live without sense of being loved, your life is very, very shallow and very, very meaningless. Your life has no fulfillment. That's why the Bible said that we know how to love. We love because God first loves us. So, we are born, as soon as we are born, we have to receive love. Our parents, our caretakers have to love us. Otherwise, we cannot survive. But in the process of growing, we have to continually receive love. But after we experience love, then we know how to share our love with other people. But because we have received all kind of unpure love or selfish kind of love, so when we got all kind of negative kind of love, so when we show our love to other people, come out all the negative and not perfect, not good kind of, not healthy kind of love. So that is why they cause a lot of problems in our human society because we, 
receive, I would say, unpure and godly kind of love, selfish kind of love. So we give that kind of love to others as well. So all these kind of negative elements of life will cause us to fear. So now let's go to the last point that I'd like to share with you. How can we live without fear? One very simple one that we know, but not easy to, to have. That's have faith in God. Because faith and fear both start with F. One is faith, one is fear. Without faith, you have fear. If you have fear, you cast out the faith. So faith secure our, our security, our peace, and now, uh, what do you call it? Stab- stability of life. That is faith. We have faith. The second one, have a personal relationship with God. As I mentioned, my personal experience with my mom in the, uh, the temple's festival, I just forgot to tell you there. I end up in a good con- you know, uh, result. Because my mom found me. <laughs> I did not find my mom, but my mom come and looked for me and then found me. So same thing happened, right? When found me, I grabbed hold of my mom and I never let go again. No matter how funny the monkeys are, everything, I don't let go. So same thing happened if we, God found us. Jesus come and found us. So now get hold of Jesus. Get hold of God because Have personal relationship with God. That's very important. Don't let go. Okay? If you hold on God tight, you're going to have a good, good relationship with God. And if you are close to God, God close to you, your life will be without fear. Okay? Trust in His words. He gives us all kind of promises. He gives us all kind of... the uh, confirmation. He gives us so many promises that if we, you know, trust him, be with him, he will protect us. And even he said that, I will be with you until the end of the world. Even I send you into this very dangerous world, but I will protect you. That's why God said that, I will hold you. I will hold up you. With my righteous right hand. God didn't say that I will use my left hand. Because right hand, it represents power. Represents strength. Okay? But if you are the left-handed person, you say, I use my left hand to hold you. You know, some people... You know, good with left hand, you know. But God is right hand God, <laughs> okay? He used right hand. <laughs> I don't know, okay, but I just assume that he's a right hand. He said, my righteous right hand to hold you, to help you. Okay, trust his word. Because his word is real. And he never lied. And he never let you down. Trust his word and live a godly life. You know, if we live a bad, you know, ungodly life, we always have sense of guilt, we sense of shame. So that guilt, that shame always kind of open the gap or some, you know, uh, place for us to get that kind of negative elements of life. So live a godly life. When you live a godly life, you don't have that kind of negative sense of guilt, sense of shame. So that's what God wants us to do. You know, and in the book of Paul, uh, book of Paul, book of Romans that written by Paul, chapter 12, verse 1 said that for the mercy of God, I beg you and I pray that give your life or live your life as a holy and lively sacrifice. So let us live a godly life so that our life will not fear because that is what God told us. 
And then the last one I want to share with you, live a purpose, different life. When you have purpose, life, you know what direction, what is the, the cause that you want to give your life to. You know, when you see Jesus, he came to this world, he has a purpose, and his purpose has two folds. One, come to deal with the issue of sin. The second issue, he wants to overcome death. So his life had purpose. He, his life totally being driven by that purpose. People want him to be the king. People want to ask him to do many things, but he said no. He just had that focus. And his life was, I would say that being destined by God, that that is his purpose. So his life had focus. When your life has focus, you don't be disturbed or being interrupted by many things around you. You have purpose, you have focus, you have goal. So that is when you have purpose. I always think, because i never been a soldier before, so so many times I think, if I was a soldier, could I have that fear? If I go and see the bullets come to my, you know, my, my ways, would I be fear or would I don't? I have no idea. But I think a lot of soldiers, they do have fear, but they control their fear with the purpose. Because the purpose is to overtake the enemies. The purpose is to live for my country. So that purpose is bigger than fear. So that is why we, if we want to live a life without fear, we got to have a purpose, a clear purpose, especially the purpose that God has given each one of us to live for him. Okay? My conclusion is this. It is true that there are many things that could cause us to live a fearful life in our world today. But... We don't need to live like that. There are ways we can learn to live without fear in the midst of this dangerous world. God is in control. Do you believe that? God in control. No matter how bad situation the world is going on, no matter how dangerous that we experience every day. You know, so many people tell me, oh, pastor, you be careful. Pastor, you, I say that my life in God's hand. If God sent me, said you have to go, I go. I don't know, but I trust that God have his purpose in my life. And know God in control the whole universe. So my little life like this, you, you take care of it. So don't be afraid. He is in control. But most of all, he loves us. He loves us so much. You know, my life, I can overcome so many problems, so many obstacles in life, so many crises in my, in my life. Why? Because I always know God loves me so much. So that's why when I know my, my mom loves me so much, wherever I go with her, I have no fear. I have no no anxiety because I have my security. I have my someone that protect me, someone love me. So God too, He loves us so much, okay? He does not want us to live fearful life at all. He built so much for many beautiful things around the world. He built so many good things for us to live. He did not expect us to live a fearful life. So don't live a fearful life. We need to have faith in Him, a personal relationship with Him, trust in His words, and live according to His purpose for each one of us. So this morning, I will let you know, I will challenge you, fear not. As Jesus said to His disciples, His followers, always saw them and just said, Fear not.
So let us do not be afraid. Live with faith, with personal relationship with Him, and live a purposeful life for Him. And your life will live healthily and happily and no fear. Let God bless you.